These augments are terrible. So can anyone explain to me why these augments are still in set 10? They were absolutely awful in set 9, so no one picked them or the legend Bard. Comparatively, Bard is a legend and these augments were not nearly as flexible as the other legends and their respective augments. Those were augments like Spoils of War, Stars Are Born and Trade Sector, which were all fun and exciting to play and use. But that just wasn't and isn't the case for any of these caretaker augments, and I'm just bewildered as to why they're in set 10 completely unchanged. But why were these augments failures as legend augments? What are the core issues with augments like this? And I've actually got a pretty good rework idea for these augments. But before we get into that, remember to subscribe. So why are these augments so terrible? Well, let's look back and consider some of the equivalent augments for other legends. Specifically, let's look at Buried Treasures, Trade Sector and Spoils of War. Now, these augments reward a certain type of strategy, that being either re-rolling or leveling and playing tempo. But the key distinction with these augments is that they can be utilised by the opposite playstyle. For example, you can use Trade Sector as you level to 2-star and stabilise your board, and similarly, you can use Spores of War in reroll comps to maintain your econ so you don't fall too far behind. So even though these augments do have a bias towards a particular playstyle, they are still flexible enough to enable other playstyles. And that is what makes a good 2-1 augment, one that can be flexibly used by players around their choices, items and shop roles. These change from game to game and players need to adapt around them, so having an augment that can do the same is fantastic, but conversely, having an augment that cannot is awful. So if we apply that logic to these barred augments, then we can see problems straight away. These augments exclusively enable leveling and playing tempo and completely shut the door on any reroll strategy. So let's say you take one of these caretaker augments, but then you stumble into many copies of one or two cost units. Well, unfortunately, you can't pursue that path as you would be effectively playing one augment down. This is especially detrimental for caretakers chosen as you substantially delay receiving the Radiant item, which is where the majority of this augment's power is focused. And that's another problem with this augment. The power spikes are so staggered and delayed that you lose a lot of HP before you even get to those spikes, regardless if you're playing tempo or re-roll. I think these augments are the only ones that do not offer immediate power. So if you take them, then you're already behind everyone else in the lobby. And sure, when you do finally reach level 8, you should be ahead in items, but how much HP have you lost getting there? I just don't get it. These augments completely fail at being an adequate 2-1 option. How these augments are going to be like this for almost a year is completely beyond me. They just suck. But now, you may be thinking, Goody, you do a lot of complaining, but do you have any good ideas on how to improve these augments? And to that, I'll say, let me cook. My idea on how to significantly improve these augments is actually pretty simple. Instead of granting the rewards per level, you grant them by a certain round. For example, instead of granting the first reward at level 5, you grant it by stage 2-7, or Krugs. I picked 2-7 here because generally that is when players hit level 5. And to decide when to grant the other rewards, you can follow the standard player leveling curve. For example, players usually hit level 7 at 4-2. Well, that was the case for set 9 and prior, I'm not sure when the average level 7 is in set 10, it could be even sooner. But instead of granting any rewards at level 7, you grant them at 4-2 instead. Regardless, these augments should focus on rewarding winning when players with them beat others despite their lack of initial power. And this would be easily done by lowering that counter by every time you win, similar to the functionality of Golden Egg. So, if you win the first three rounds of Stage 2, you would get your first reward at 2-4, or just after the carousel, instead of 2-7. But of course, if you happen to lose or you want to play a one-cost reroll comp, you would still get that reward by Krugs. Now, this idea would be an incredible buff to this augment, especially if you're getting that Radiant Armory numerous rounds sooner than average. But this new system would introduce more levers for its balance. For example, if Caretaker's Chosen was overperforming, then instead of nerfing the access to the Radiant Armory by an entire level or two, Riot could nerf it by increments of rounds. So they could delay that powerful spike by a round or two, rather than having to substantially stagger it. Ultimately, this change would make this augment far more viable for reroll, tempo and flex players, as those rewards are guaranteed and a lot more secure. This change would permit far more freedom with these augments and easily skyrocket their play rate. 
I really hope Riot rework these augments in this manner because I really love their concept but I truly despise their execution. These augments were just not pickable in set 9 and I'm afraid that will also be the case for set 10. But yeah, I will end the rant there. I suppose now I should ask what you guys think about these augments. Have you tried them and if so how did they feel? Do you think they will be viable in set 10? And lastly, what do you think about my rework idea? Let me know in the comments and remember to subscribe. Anyway, check out these other videos if you want to see more from me. And as always, thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.